Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista. And this is Ari. <laughs> and that's Lilith. <laughs> the cats are joining us to record today, apparently. Yeah, they're cats. So, yeah, <laughs> that's how that goes. Um, how are you doing this week, Brandon? Uh, I don't know. It's been a long week, but mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we got a sick pupper, so yeah. dealing with that. Yeah, last week we had recorded in advance, so it's been a while. It's been a bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we've got a sick puppy that's had some ups and downs this last week, so we weren't even sure we were going to get to record today, but we got her in. I got coffee. Yeah, we're gonna, we're recording Sunday morning with coffee. Mm, I was coffee. That, that you just segued into what are you drinking? Yeah, <laughs> delicious coffee. Me too. But it's mine's got some salted caramel and stuff. And mine has some pumpkin spice. Oh, okay, <laughs> special coffee. That's right. It is. Yesterday was the first day of fall, so that is why I'm drinking pumpkin spice. It has nothing to do with the fact that I've been drinking pumpkin spice for like a month. But, you started drinking pumpkin spice about the same time that Disneyland started uh, Halloween. That's true. That's so, about, that's per- yeah. pretty much perfect. Yeah, you're on the exactly same. Right. You're on the same I holiday track as Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney holiday scheduling is the same as Christmas holiday scheduling. Mm-hmm. Two months of Halloween and a month and a half of Christmas. Um, yeah, basically, mm. <laughs> quite frankly, <laughs> if I could do two months and two months, I would, but it doesn't we quite ta- work out. We take a slight pause, uh, here in Canada for Thanksgiving. Yes. But in- during spooky season, but yeah. So I'm like fall and spooky, fall and spooky, fall and spooky, fall, spooky, 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 <laughs> spooky, 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 spooky. <laughs> um, Brandon, what is your nerd thing this week? Uh, I started playing the... Uh, semi-sequel continuation of the Spider-Man game. Mm -hmm. This one uh, is focusing on Miles Morales, who you would know if you watched the Spider-Verse movies. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's pretty cool. Or read the comics with Miles Morales in them. Well, yes, (laughs) but... No, no one's that nerdy. Oh wait, yes, lots of people. Oh, right. So many people. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the Spider Verse movies are pretty big. So yeah, yeah, that's... that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how are you liking it so far? It's good. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, more of the same of the first game. And basically. you really liked the first game. Yeah, the, so. the first game was probably better. This one's mm-hmm. kind of a little small. It feels smaller. I don't hmm. know. Um, but I'm looking forward to the. the the actual sequel sequels coming out where it's going to be both Peter Parker and Miles Morales working together. When does that come out? Uh, like two days. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, are you going to have this one done so you can play that right away? I, it, there, video games are so expensive now anyways, I probably wouldn't get it straight out of the gates, but, oh, okay. uh, yeah, no, it's shortly. I don't know. Maybe, maybe October, but it's very, very, very soon. S- very soon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, do you want to know what my nerd thing is? I would love to. I actually have two. No. Oh, because... Because you're a double n- the nerd? Well, last week I had a nerd thing, but we didn't record. We had recorded in advance. Uh, Dreamlight Valley had an update. Mm, you and did, And it's all yeah. like, it, it has amazing... So maybe my favorite... And it had new Star Path and had Beauty and the Beast update, which is awesome because Beauty and the Beast is like my favorite. But the Star Path, this might be my second favorite. My first favorite was probably the Disney Parks one where you got, like, the rides and stuff like that. That was very cool. This one, though, has Haunted Mansion stuff. It has Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. It even has a little bit of Hocus Pocus stuff. And it has Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. So it's, like, so many of my favorite things. It it makes me so happy. Is it Pirates of the Caribbean or is it just, like, generic pirates? Well, it's mostly pirates, but there's definitely Pirates of the Caribbean stuff in it. Like, you can get, like, the... Um, do you know the chest of Cortez that you get that in, from the first movie? Like, that's one of yeah. the items. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. That's cool. The only problem is there's really, really cool stuff in the premium shop, too. <laughs> Which means I need to do better on my dream snaps to get more moonstones, because I want all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't been super good. And we still haven't heard when this game becomes <laughs> free-to-play yet, have we? No, they, it they... just said 2023, <laughs> so everyone's kind of guessing. Christmas um, time? Yeah, they, if it, the digital copy is coming out in October, so people are like, oh, it'll probably be like shortly after that. Yeah. The op- the opposite, the physical copy you're mm. talking about. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I meant that. <laughs> yeah, I knew what you meant. You, you, but... you speak, Krista. Yeah. But I have some really, really exciting nerd thing to talk about. Well, it is a travel podcast, sort I, of. I'm going to go to Disney. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. No, you're you talked before you're going on a cruise this spring? Yeah, we're we're doing separate spring vacations because of how work is. Our work 
our work doesn't line up for Easter holidays this year. Yeah, so. Brandon can never um, take off the beginning of the month, and that's just when Easter happens to fall. And I don't really take off because of the school calendar. I can only take off like you're, school holidays. Yeah, you're stuck on school holiday schedules. So, so it is every, what it is. every few years, Easter doesn't line up for us to travel together. So we generally just don't travel those years. But this year. We were like, let's just let's just do this. So you're going to go on a cruise, but I'm going to Disneyland with my mom and my sister. We are doing a girls Disneyland trip, and we're going to be there for Dapper Day, and I'm so excited. We're going to be there for Easter and Dapper Day. And I'm going to be home def- defending the house <laughs> with our attack kitties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I was gonna... trying to convince you to come down for Dapper Day. Yeah. It's probably not worth it, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not, because I'll just have gotten back from a big trip anyways. Yeah, and you'll be kind of be tired and stuff. Oh, but like, I don't, uh, I don't hopefully know. not too tired. I mean, cruises should be fairly relaxing. That's true. I'll be very close to Disney World, because I'm flying into Orlando from my cruise. <clears throat> but you're not going to Disney World. I'm not allowed to go to Disney World. <laughs> I, I, might, I might try to get there a couple days early and go to Universal. I think that would be cool. Um, before they... Before they have three parks, mm-hmm. and yeah, just go and check that out. I don't know. I we'll see. Idea. We'll see. Yeah. we got we got a couple trips coming up first, and then yeah, um, yeah. But we'll... it was really exciting because we like we've been talking about planning this for a few months, and then this last week we booked the plane tickets, we booked the hotel room, and now we're just waiting to book the park tickets themselves. Ah, you're gonna be there a long time, so you're gonna have. A lot of down days. It'll be a little more relaxing than when we're, we've... We're going to, like... Um, yeah, we haven't, like, decided on which day specific... Other than Dapper Day, of course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it, it's looking into some kind of cool stuff. And uh, we've got some stuff we want to do in downtown Disney. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, we're... yeah, planning Dapper Day. And you'll be able to sleep a little more and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, not like last time, which... I was totally fine with, but my body was kind of angry at me by the end, especially the part where I, like, fell asleep literally walking. <laughs> that's, that's the thing with childless millennial Disney adults. They're getting old. Yeah, that's true. And we go from rope drop to park close. We're like, we rope drop the rope drop, <laughs> and we, like... It's a long, it's a long day. It's like an 18-hour day. And we did five of them in a row, and... Was it, a, yeah, did it... Over over New Year's, it was in a row. We did all our days in a row. Oh, we did. We had a not stay in there. Mm. We did do a not yeah. stay. That's right. Which was a slight sleep in. We slept until like. Well, knots doesn't open as early, and it's still mm-hmm. pretty close um, to Uber there. Mm-hmm. So it was. Okay. And it closed a little earlier. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Less walking. Yeah, but I'm so excited. It'll be super fun. Um, yeah, we've been looking at like Dapper Day outfits. My mom and sister have never been for one of those, so I'm like, well, I'm dressing up. <laughs> and you're educating them in the fine arts of Disney bounding. Disney bounding, yeah, yeah. So we had all these ideas, and we we're like, we should just Disney bound a bunch of the days too. And yeah, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but it'll be super fun. Um, my sister and her new husband are going to be in Disney World in October, and then when they come back from that, I think we'll like talk more about like with what we're doing and when and stuff but you have any suggestions for different things you should let me know i'm pretty sure when we see them at thanks at thanksgiving you're gonna be talking about oh so much yeah yeah, so much yeah in fact i'm gonna need to go get my gonna go to the local brewery there (laughs) and get a whole growler just for me because i because you'll just be sad that you're not coming uh, and you'll have to drown your sorrows uh, (laughs) but no we've got like ideas on um you know which restaurants we want to try and maybe do some fun different things like that that maybe we haven't done before or that they haven't done before because, of course, the last couple of times uh, we've gone without them and, yeah. The, that's the best thing. Well, <clears throat> I mean, the best thing is actually going, but one of the best things about having a trip planned is that you get to plan all the stuff. I and love planning, like, and, yeah. And look forward to it, so Yeah, I love nice. all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. so it's super fun. So, anyway, that was that was a really nice, um, when we were worrying about Sick Puppy, that was, like, a nice thing. To yeah, a little to. bit of a distraction. Yeah, you can't for sure. do it. Can't do anything about that, so... Exactly. Okay, so, Brandon, we also have an Ahsoka episode. Yeah. All right, so this is episode six. We have two left. What did you think? Uh, this... For... So, one of the complaints about, like, the Boba Fett show is that uh, there was a, a, an episode and a half where, like, it, Boba Fett wasn't in it at all. Yeah. Uh, 
this episode, Ahsoka's like barely in it in her own show, yeah. but it works so well. I like thought it's, this worked so much better than yeah, that, though. Yeah, it didn't feel like, oh, we're going to jump to a Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, it's not, Mandalorian's not in this, if you're like... Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, this, the, there was not much Ahsoka in this. There will be, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, next, next episode, but it was a very cool uh, side character... <clears throat> <clears throat> exploration and the big introduction that I'm not going to talk about because right. no, spo- no, 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 no spoilers. No, 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 no. Um, but I mean, it was in the trailer, so right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this felt way more natural. Like in the Boba Fett show, it just like it didn't. We didn't even see him at all but there was no connection until later yeah whereas here the connection was established well, the whole time exactly so and, sabine yeah. is like a character 1b kind of thing yeah so totally yeah it, it's fine anyway it um, felt a lot le- it felt a lot more natural the it general cool general too. consensus on this is like ahsoka's like basically the best star wars show like right up there with andor mm-hmm. um and like people are really digging how it's tying in rebels and um, Clone Wars with live action, yeah. and <clears throat> people have their fingers crossed that it like bridges the gap between the um, original trilogy and the sequel trilogy, mm. kind of like how Clone Wars kind of fixed the pre- the prequel right. trilogy. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. That, eh, we'll see. I don't. I, I don't know. But uh, that's putting a lot of weight on it, though. Yeah. So far, Andor is still my favorite, and I love Mandalorian. I think people are discounting Mandalorian a little too much. Just remember season one of Mandalorian. Yeah, pe- people were down on season three. I wasn't one of those people, but no. it wasn't as good, but it was still good. <laughs> no, I, but I I'm thinking of it as more of like a whole. But I think the Mandoverse <laughs> together with, like, because Ahsoka and Boba yeah. Fett and Mando all all doing their thing, like, Andor is going to be off on its own because totally. it's a different time yeah, period, right? different time period. Um, those those live action series kind of working together to build up to their own Avengers style. I think it's great group up movie, yeah. which is what the the rumors are. I think could work as a bridge to the sequel trilogy and like kind of quote unquote redeem that. Yeah, I well, I hope so. I mean, I didn't have as much problem with the sequel trilogy as a lot of people did, namely because of how um, much of a fan I was of like Ray and stuff. But I think if we've got, I, I like I like that idea, and I'm hopeful. I really like the casting that they've done with all of these guys, and I just think everyone's like, I don't know, it's very cool. It's like super fun Star Wars to watch. Yeah, they they've done very good, and um, Rosario Dawson's been playing Ahsoka very interestingly, mm-hmm. where she's like at the beginning, she's like kind of aloof and. It's almost a reverse Gandalf where she's oh. like all reserved and and not wanting to do anything and mm-hmm. then as she's reconnecting with all her former colleagues and like learning a little bit more about the current situation, she comes a little mm-hmm. more fun again. Like yeah. I think the last couple scenes of her she's got a smirk on her face <laughs> again, right? So I don't know. And we'll also see. shout out David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he, I love everything he does. So even like this little thing, I love him. He's basically in every nerd po- property now. Uh, <clears throat> did he do Marvel? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. Oh, Netflix. He did. Um, he was uh, Jennifer, uh, Jessica Jones. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Primary. I antagonist. forgot about Netflix. Not, one. not as fun. Uh, very nope. cool though. Oh my! <laughs> like literally, <laughs> incredibly cool villain. But yeah, not not a fun not a fun one. Um, now, Brandon, at this point, you'd also do like better know a listener. But instead of doing that, I actually have something to share about a better know a listener that we did before. Yeah. So we got a message from a better know a listener. One. Woo. Woo. Um, apparently, first of all, we were pronouncing the town wrong. Yeah, I think I was getting confused with a different place that's in BC. Um, also, like a native type name, very similar just, type name, and yeah. so you just naturally I, were saying my it. my minor dyslexia was p- pulling the letters <laughs> in different areas. Anyway, yes, and I might still say this wrong, but Snohomish. Yeah, it, that's that's how it's spelled. So that makes, it makes it makes sense. How are we sense. saying it? Snohomish. Oh, very similar. Then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The O in the N is flippy floppy. So Jennifer from Snohomish message to say that it is indeed, well, this was a better known listener we did previously, recently, Mm -hmm. and it was, it is a beautiful little town, and apparently you should try a slice of pie at the little pie shop on First Street, and there's an old haunted saloon. 
The, the, both of those things sound very good. I, I know. I love pie and I love haunted places. We uh we stayed in a haunted hotel once. We've done like haunted ghost tour things. Little creepy dead children talk to me apparently. Uh, yeah, and like the Montana State Prison, which is somewhat near us, is still on my list as a big yes. major haunted place. Yeah. So there's uh, Ghost Hunt Alberta, and they previous to COVID, we're doing events down there once a year, and we're always like, oh, one year we'll do it, one year we'll do it. I don't know, maybe next year or the year after. You're getting me to like haunted stuff, like spooky stuff a little bit more again. I, I took a many-year hiatus. <laughs> but anyway, hi, Jennifer, and uh, thanks for messaging us. Yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's very cool. And We it, love that. It does sound like a cool little town that you got there. And we so. want to go to the haunted saloon and have pie. Mm, pie. It's Snohomish, and we're sorry for saying your name wrong. Yeah. The t- all of the town. <laughs> <laughs> My pronunciations are not no, great all no, the time. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Anything to add before we go to the news? No, I just, I'm curious to hear all the news. It's been a while. Disney A News Update. Okay, so it has been a while. We're not going to talk about all the news we missed, because otherwise, you know, that would be the show. But just like some big ones, most of the news, honestly, is... A lot of stuff that came out after, like, the Destination D23, like, reactions and things. But there's a couple news items we want to talk about. Yeah, and, like, and with any convention like that, it, there's always a PR spin. There's a couple leaks beforehand to get the hype going. And, and then exactly. they have the actual presentation. And then they fill in some more details as it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big company, and they're worried about their stock price. So they got to keep themselves in the news the whole time, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... The two big things that I want to talk about, like lots of stuff, Halloween stuff, of fall stuff and everything is going on um, at, in the Disney parks. And also it's Hispanic and Latin Heritage Month. Um, and so like downtown Disney and Disneyland and Disney World, they're all celebrating that as well. We also have a lot of anniversaries going on Pirates and Haunted um, and I said Haunted Mansion, sorry, Pirates and Nightmare Before Christmas. So there's merch coming up for that. But the mm-hmm. two big things I wanted to talk about. Um, first of all, let's talk Disney Parks, and that is Avengers Vault has officially opened. Oh yeah, the little uh, the exit to the gift shop where there's no <laughs> there's no e- exit. There's no, there's no exit yet, but but uh, there is the gift shop. <laughs> there is the gift shop, and there's something I want so bad. <laughs> there's two things I two, it's, I know I'm on a lounge fly budget, and I'm not at the Disney Parks, and we should be very happy about that because there's two lounge fly bags that I want so bad right now. They are they are very cool, and one is in the exit through the gift shop place, and that is. They have Scarlet Witch. They, it's very similar to the ears you got. Yeah, it would it match like perfectly. Matches your ears. Are those lounge fly ears? I don't remember. Um, no, I don't think those ones are lounge fly ears. Um, they're similar because like lounge fly ears are usually got leather, mm-hmm. uh, the faux leather in them, and yeah. those have a faux leather finish. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, your steam's booting up. Why? <laughs> it wants it wants you to play a game. <laughs> For spooky season, okay. I did want to play a game for spooky season. I haven't yet. Okay, so that was fun. Um, so one is there, and then just coming back to it, before we go back to Avengers Vault, I forgot to say there's an Ahsoka lounge fly bag in, we saw it in a video for Downtown Disney at the... It, it's at the, the Star Wars trading post. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be. And it's probably too. it's probably in, at, at Star Tours space. Probably. Um, Maybe even... And it might be in Galaxy's Edge too. Who, who knows? knows? Ahsoka's know. in Galaxy's Edge. It doesn't. They usually don't have lounge fly type stuff in there, but who knows? Honestly, you can buy a, a, a the stuffed animal that are like the to- Tandorian toy, toy ma- maker. Tandorian mm-hmm. toy makers of Ahsoka now. Yeah, too, she so. looks really cool. It's really yeah, cute. I really, yeah. I really like the Ewok one, and I really like Chewbacca. But I'm like, I'm becoming a massive Ahsoka fan. You and everybody else. Well, I mean, <laughs> fair. And but I have the ears. See, I have ears for Ahsoka and Scarlet Witch. I should have the bags that match. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> um, but anyway, Avengers Vault. <laughs> but yeah, you like literally you and everyone else, Ahsoka's everyone's favorite awesome. new, quote unquote, new character. Mm-hmm. Um, and the funny thing is, like I've said before, when she was introduced, absolutely hated. Yeah. Don't you love these redemption things? Yeah. Um, there's other Star Wars characters that have had a bit of a redemption over time and properties like you were talking Clone Wars and things like that. They fixed a lot of the early stuff. And then we had the actor who played Jar Jar. He got like a cool moment in Mandalorian 3. And so it's, that's cool having yeah. different things like that. Now we just need 
redemption for Jake Lloyd, who played the young Anakin in the, in Episode One, because oh, right. he he had a lot of trauma after that yeah, came out. He's, like he's just a kid, just a kid, and like basically quit acting and oh. had horrible. And, and then um, Rose. Marie Tran, who yeah. played Rose in the, she needs. She needs something. So, yeah. like, Dave Filoni, get on it. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can do it. I have faith in you, Dave. Um, okay, so we watched a couple videos that had Avengers Vault stuff. What did you think of this? Oh, it's good. It's, like, in theme. It's in the right location. <laughs> way it's, better. It's way smaller than the, the old warehouse superstore, but that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it was way too big and gangly and, yeah, and like, work. in a weird spot off in the boonies. And, mm-hmm. like, pro- a lot of people probably didn't even know it was there. But that is how I finally got my Scarlet Witch ears because people right. probably didn't know it was exactly. there. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, yeah, this is much more concentrated. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of cool stuff. It's kind of organized by Avenger. Uh, like, there's an Iron Man section and a Black Panther section and so on. Yeah. And a, right now, of course, a big Loki, Loki section of because mm-hmm. they're gearing up for the Loki show. In, like, two weeks. <laughs> um, and then they have a big focus on, like, the Infinity mm-hmm. um, the infinity Treasures and, like, the Gauntlet. So you can you can get a, a Thanos Gauntlet or a Nano I, Iron Man Gauntlet and, yeah. and get your Infinity Stones and they all light up and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I like the looks of this. I like that it's in th- it's all themed. I like the details and stuff they have. And I like they actually have some of the displays and stuff. Like, they took the Iron Man that you can buy, the big, authentic Iron Man suit. Life-size Iron Man suit. Yeah, they actually, like, brought that over. And so they, even though it's smaller... It's because you haven't bought it yet. Well, I'm sorry. I guess next time. Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like that... Even though it's smaller, they still were able to do some yeah. displays and things like that. As I think well. it, I think it works well and it's good, and that that means they can bulldoze the Hollywood backlot now. So and do something <laughs> do something cool with it. useful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and then the other thing we wanted to talk about was there was this news that came out about apparently Disney intending to spend a whole lot of money in the upcoming future on Disney parks, Disney parks, and cruises cruise line this first of all this would be international disney parks as well cruise line is also considered part of this yeah so the disney company would be broken up into different business units Mm -hmm. and um disney parks is one of the big pillars of a business unit and that includes every single park around the world disneyland disney world uh, hong kong tokyo shanghai Shanghai, Mm -hmm. everything blah 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 Paris, Mm -hmm. and the uh cruise ships yep which they're going great guns on, as we talked about uh, in our last episode. (laughs) So over the last (laughs) 10 years, they have spent, was it 30 30 billion? 30 billion was the estimate, which makes sense. They've been building a lot um, overseas. Mm -hmm. And a bit of expansion Mm -hmm. in Disney World, a little bit. Well, this include and Disneyland, this included Galaxy's Edge, this included Avengers Campus. So, yeah, those are two big Disneyland yeah, projects. That's totally. true, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but apparently, um, they are intending to spend, over the next next 10 years, $60 billion. So, so, yeah, we're getting this from a uh, basically a, a planning document uh, that was submitted to the SEC. As a big company, we actually do this, uh, the company I work oh. for, we have to submit uh, forecasts and mm-hmm. plan capital spending plans. It's not to the SEC. Although we might have to do something to that, too, because we, we are traded on the New York Stock right. Exchange. But I, I don't know. Um, but, but the Canadian government has a, uh, an annual capital expenditure survey. Mm-hmm. So we have to, like, tell, tell them what we're going to plan to spend and like and then what we actually did spend. Because, right. So I'm, I'm going to go a little inside baseball okay. accounting. All right. Because people are a little confused. They're like, well, we're hearing about how Disney has to, like, tighten the belt and they're mm-hmm. spending too yeah. much and then this report comes out where they're going to spend a bunch so when they're talking about tightening the belt they want to reduce their like operating costs okay uh so they they want less overhead staff that's when they got they downsized, they downsized a, bunch, yeah. a bunch of people um <laughs> and they want to reduce operating like just how much it costs to keep a park open every day a right? daily yeah they least kind of stuff in this one. That's a completely different bucket than what they're talking about for these capital expenditures. That's, okay. That's investment in infrastructure and stuff that's going to make the money. Okay. So operating costs, you're just spending money. You're not making money off of this. Whereas you have an investment, capital investment, mm-hmm. that, that's a, that's a, that creates an asset that lets you make money from. Okay. So two different things. 
And that's what that and that is also Disney Company that is within the Disney Parks umbrella too. So yeah. a lot of people are like, Oh, well Disney Parks is not the same as, you know, Disney Entertainment or anything. It's like, yeah, but within each of those is further breakdowns, like in this case operating and capital. Yeah. It operating expenditures are not even thought of in the it's not the same it's mm-hmm. not the same thing at all for capital and operating are completely two different things okay. um, in the accounting world. And it's, you, you, you're talking about your income statement and your balance sheets. Right. Um, and they want to build their balance sheet up. Okay. And the other thing is, it, as long as they have their their operating costs under control, they have enough cash flows to access um, debt. And oh. as... Uh, regular run-of-the-mill people, we hear debt and and that sounds mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. Um, for a company, you want some debt because that allows you to make money using other people's money. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, ah. you, if a company has zero debt, zero liabilities on their books, they're not run properly. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Which is weird to think about, but anyway. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we I'll don't stop often... talking about accounting stuff now. No, and... but that actually is helpful because I hear a lot of people talk about this kind of thing. It is con- it is confusing to hear them talk about how they need to cut costs and et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera, but then also want to spend money. It, it's, just, it's just the way a company works, yeah. Yeah, and see, that's, like, that's kind of the big thing. It's... Trying to explain it in ways that we understand using the same words that mean something different <laughs> to us sometimes. Right. Yeah. Or have the different connotations to it anyway. Yeah, and as long as they have access to debt facilities to actually build that stuff, then they're not actually spending the money right. up front either. Okay. Which is what they want. Which is what they want, and then they can amortize the cost of that over... <laughs> Okay, I'm I, I'm doing it again. I'm sorry. You can spread out the money over the period of of time where, and then people are attending the parks and giving you money, so right. that it, it it matches up and like pays that. off. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you. That's good. I said you need to explain this. Yeah. Okay. Right. I feel I should I I I feel the need to go on Excel right now and make a <laughs> spreadsheet. I don't know. <laughs> Got any more of them spreadsheets? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, let's head to the main topic before <laughs> before you start color coding graphs or something. Ooh, graphs, yeah. You forgot the, the, the funniest news. Okay, what's the funniest news? The whole bear in Disney World thing. Oh my thing. goodness. <laughs> I wanted to do that before we got into the serious business talk, but you missed It's me- been a you week. Me- <laughs> you messed up. It's been a week. Okay, I want to hear it. There was a bear in Disney World. There was a bear in Disney World, yeah. Uh, Disney World actually had to shut down for a morning because a, a, a black bear was found in Magic, Magic King- Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. He yeah. was hanging out. He wanted to go. He wanted to go see his friends at the Country Bear he Jamboree. Did. He did. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, a bunch of memes came out of so a, many. a bear on the ride. Yeah. So, like, pictures the memes of the bear. were amazing. Yeah, I, I love actually. the memes. Yeah. <clears throat> they were so good. So yeah, I learned that there's bears in Florida. I had no idea I there were bears in Florida. Honestly, we have lots of bears around here. Yeah, but we live in the mountains. <laughs> we do not live in Florida. Yeah, I guess they are. Uh, I, I think it's just the gators and the manatees take up all the oxygen, so you don't hear about the bears yeah, in that's, Florida. that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that was really cool. I really liked the memes. And, of course, the country bear ones were my favorites. But, yeah. I mean, that's low-hanging fruit, but... Don't care. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably throw on some bear necessities yeah, jokes in totally. there as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh was a big one, mm, too. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot funnier than the business news. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the business news is positive. They they're they're looking to expand the Disney parks, yeah, which is yeah. cool, and, and and like by a fair bit. So interesting. It's it's good to um. You need to keep investing in your infrastructure, otherwise it's it's gonna become yep stagnant and yeah. bad so yeah I don't know. and then of course we've talked a lot about epic universe in universal disney's got some work to do now they're they have been the ones setting the bar and that is they're, they're losing their ground here with this they're, with they're they're now limboing they're right not, they're not setting the bar exactly anymore, no. <laughs> nice metaphor yeah. <laughs> disney plus and chill <clears throat> all right so the 2010s brandon it's our last decade episode. Yeah, for now. We're, well, we've we're got almost... another seven years. <laughs> <laughs> it's going by. That's true. <laughs> um, okay, so the 2010s, 
it's we we I'm not gonna go through everything that happened. We had some park stuff happen, of course. We had some Disney company stuff, but everything kind of got overshadowed by this thing that happened in 2020. Yeah, I mean that's the end of yeah. the 2010, so it's not but we really. Had Bob Iger was kind of, you know, at the helm, and we're mostly gonna talk about the movies. Yeah, that that was the the big. Yeah, but mostly because that was where Disney found a lot of success in the 2010s. We can thank Marvel for this. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to that in a second here. And Star Wars. Yep, and Star Wars too. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go through. Um, we're going to save and we're going to talk about the animated ones after. Okay? Um, so if you listen to our 2000s episode, Disney had bought Marvel. Disney had bought, um, well, Disney bought everything, basically. Pixar. The, 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 yeah, they got Pixar. They got marvel and well and then they before that they got lucasfilm yes before that and um of course so we had a lot of touchstone pictures movies come out in the 2010s i'm not going to run through all of these but uh just some different ones is uh you could have watched step up 3d <laughs> darn i missed that one shucks um movies like you again or um the i am number four do you remember that kind no, of no oh okay um, again so the t- help Touchstone was is the production company that's still under Disney that they mm-hmm. used to like re, uh, release like adult. Exactly. Not necessarily uh, rated R or anything no, like no, that, but, but just like not well, child. Like the, the help is a good exactly. example. Mm-hmm. It, that's the kind of thing they they've done that since like the eighties. I think they used Touchstone. Yes. Yeah. So yes, um, we also had a lot of Disney nature movies come out in this. This is where we had all of our documentaries our nature documentaries came out during this time or what was say all, what was the first them. resurgence of the disney nature because that was pretty big it, it was um so uh, i don't then, know if it was the first like super successful one but the first one on this list that came out is a uh, flamingos one okay no that's not no it's called the crimson wing mystery of the flamingos and then after that we had african cats um chimpanzee <laughs> Hmm. Wings of Life. I guess they all <clears throat> they all just kind of followed off the success of the March of the Penguins, which of course wasn't Disney nature, but no, same, but it was like, same hey, idea. Yeah. look what's making money. <laughs> look what we can do as well. Yeah. Exactly. And then we also had some live action Disney movies. We had the Alice in Wonderland um, one. We had oh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, that Nicolas Cage one. I never saw that. Yeah, exactly. Me or anyone else, I don't think. Yeah. I remember I remember seeing uh, ads for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Alice in Wonderland ones are interesting. Um, the, especially the first one, it was converted to 3D very, very badly, and it came out very shortly after Avatar, because mm-hmm. um, Avatar was 2009, I believe. Yeah. And then Alice in Wonderland came out very shortly after, and it was hurriedly converted to 3d mm-hmm. because the 3d craze was big big big, big Avatar, and, yeah. and alice in wonderland became like a billion dollar movie yeah. and it was not very good <laughs> <laughs> alice in wonderland is always going to be popular because of how weird it is yeah and it and that's the cool part and there was some cool parts of it yeah um there was some stuff that they did a, that was, was like <laughs> very in it did this thing where it Played into the stuff that people remembered from the cartoon, but did its own thing that was based way more on the books and yeah. also on Tim Burton just being weird. And it was supposed to be like a semi sequel, and yeah, yeah. And, and Tim Burton is. Tim but yeah, Burton, it was like uh, it took the world of the books more so, and but made the story a sequel. So I don't know. It like I don't know. It hit people right. Anyway, I actually found it enjoyable. It wasn't very. I, I'm and I'm the, aware of that, but I didn't say it was good. I said it was a and the and the Secret. rushed rushed uh, 3D conversion no, was really bad. That actually probably made it worse. Um, mm. We also had popular box office movies like Secretariat, Tron Legacy. Um, what, are we calling that a successful box office well, movie? Well, <laughs> we we had ones that you know made the list. Oh, I'm getting there. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. But then we also had the Muppets movies came back. Oh, the yeah. Uh huh. The 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 reboot of the Muppet um, with the the 
are you a man or are you a muppet? Yeah, yeah was, I loved it. That yeah. was that was very good. Yeah, the I loved it. The sequel was not it. as good. But. That well, that was also on this list, yeah. of course. We had several Pixar. Oh, we also sorry, going back to Walt Disney Pictures, ones that were not released under Walt Disney Animation Studios or Pixar. We had Frank and Weenie, that was listed under Tim Burton Productions. That was. That's like one of the most underrated. That's it was amazing. Very, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so good. And not very successful, but it was so sad, but <laughs> so so good. Oz the Great and Powerful. Again, I never saw that, we but I remember not coming seen out. That yeah. Yet. Yeah. Um. Oh, the Lone Ranger. Ooh. <laughs> planes. Yep. Oh yeah, planes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But then we also had Saving Mr. Banks. I actually really liked that. That was all right. Yeah, Yeah, I really liked that one. That is basically just a, hey, Disney nerds, here you go. Yeah. We had the Planes movies, uh uh-huh. But we also had Maleficent, which is still, like, a lot of people's favorite live-action interpretation of something, mostly because they love Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. I... It was fine. We only watched the first one. I thought it was fine. I liked parts of it. I had a problem with other parts. Yeah, I mean... From a storytelling perspective. It's... It's kind of tired to, like, do, well, she's just a misunderstood person rather than a villain. Like, Maleficent's, like, evil, evil in Mm -hmm. the original. Like, so trying to spin that as, like, oh, just misunderstood or whatever is kind of lame. Yeah, you can have where she started misunderstood, but you need to follow her making her more evil. Like, even at the end, she's not. And I'm like, if you're going to, I get they did a sequel. I I do understand that. But they didn't know they were doing that when they did the first one. Right. Yeah, I think I think the Cruella origin did story did better I think with so that, too. where she was just like off. She there was something off. To she was always with. a little off. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's fine. I I do like doing a new story in live action rather than doing Agreed. a remake. Yeah, inspired by. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like the remakes, uh, I don't know how they're. <laughs> the, we still haven't seen Little Mermaid, by the way. Yeah, but we it, will. Eventually. I guess. It's spooky season now. We're yeah. not watching anytime soon. Mm. We also had Into the Woods. I've only seen part of this, but loved it. I want to see the rest of it. And then we got into our serious live action because in 2015, Cinderella came out. That one was okay. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I like that they tried to make her, a, without completely redoing her, they tried to develop her a little bit more, and especially her relationship with her stepmother, without rewriting it i guess i like that um tomorrowland which we haven't seen and neither did anyone else yeah the rest oh j- yeah live action we've got the jungle book we've got alice jungle book the- that's the only one that i like yeah <laughs> we really liked that one alice through the looking glass which was the sequel we didn't watch big friendly giant the pete's dragon redo which i was not a fan of i liked some things about it but i was not a fan overall yeah um no, we watched a lot of these live action yeah. uh, for our live action episode, yeah, exactly. which you can go and search yeah. and find out. I have no idea what episode Oh, that I don't know either, but I could find out. Um, just very quickly here, Beauty and the Beast, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. We have A Wrinkle in Time. I didn't watch that either. Didn't the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. We watched that for a Christmas episode. We did, yeah. Uh-huh. Not great. Mary Poppins Returns. Actually, I liked that. I haven't seen it, so... I, I liked that. It, it's supposed to be, like, decent. Yeah, it is decent. And anything with Lin-Manuel Miranda in it is, like, worth a watch. He did a good job. I, well, I mean, everyone did a good job. I really liked that one. Yeah, Emily Blunt... Emily made Blunt's a, great. ...made a good new Mary... Like, it, yeah. it's tough to... That's... That's a tough one. Yeah, that's... <laughs> so she did She did admirably. I... Yes, because she didn't try and... Re- she wasn't trying to be Julie Andrews. Right. She was just like... It was, an, again, an interpretation of. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Aladdin. We had The Lion King. Again, we're like really, really... We had a lot of Fox um, searchlight pictures, including Jojo Rabbit, which is one of my favorites. We had... They haven't. They hadn't bought Fox at this point yet, though. So is that really a Disney? Well, it's list. It's under their list, but yeah. uh, um, other ones that came out that were live action. We had Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and we had Lady on the Tramp. But this other thing that happened in 2019 is Disney Plus came out. So we have Noel, which was their Christmas one. D- Lady La- and the Tramp came out there. Yeah, Lady and the Tramp mm-hmm. was a direct to Disney Plus. They, I don't know if they planned it that way or they made it and realized it wasn't very good. So like, let's just release it on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was kind of that. But 
Pixar. We had, I want to talk Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and then we're going to end with animated. Okay. Okay. Ready? Sure. Pixar, Toy Story 3. Yep. So good. That was 2010, I believe. Yep. yep. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Cars 2, 2011. <laughs> I've, have you seen the meme and it's like, it's like the Cars trilogy and it's like, Cars 1, racing. <laughs> <laughs> Cars 2, a complex spy thriller about <laughs> lemon cars trying to take over the world, blah, 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 blah. Cars 3, racing. <laughs> no, but that's great. <laughs> it, it, it is kind of weird how, like, the plot yeah, of Cars 2 doesn't really fit. And, yeah. like, Mater being the main character no. almost. Uh, anyway, no. Cars 2, we talked about all the Pixar movies mm-hmm. when we did our rundown. Cars 2, I think, was my worst. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was actually both of our worst. Yeah, I was... It's really nah, bad. Nah. Um, Cars three was actually like surprisingly I good. Cars 3, yeah, I, I like might have liked Cars three more than Cars one. I, I don't probably know. do actually. I think I put Cars one higher, but like by one point or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, we have Brave in twenty twelve. I liked Brave. I think Brave is underrated and does not get the love it deserves. I, I love the animation and I love the setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the plot leaves a bit to, to be desired. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I get so caught up in like her just being awesome and the yeah, setting being awesome. Yeah, Meredith is pretty cool, but she's awesome. Just like I don't know, the yeah. plot is uh, meh. Meh. Monsters University, shocking, way better than I expected. Actually, yeah, not too bad. Um, I still like the Monsters at Work show better, but I like this. Yeah, that's actually underrated. A lot of people didn't like the Monsters at Work. <clears throat> yeah, show. Yeah, that's I crazy. I, I, th- I thought it was great. They're really wrong. Good. They are just wrong. <laughs> We also have Inside Out. I liked Inside Out. Inside Out's very good. Yeah. And then we have, okay, The Good Dinosaur. I think we watched that. We did. <laughs> That's how much of an impact it left on me, because uh, I don't really remember That's it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There you go. Good. That actually might have been the lowest. Yeah. Yeah. At least I remember some stuff from Cars 2, I guess. It, it left it left an impression, good or bad, whereas Good Dinosaur was just like... There. I don't know. There was a dinosaur and a child. Yeah. That was about it. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. Cars 3 came out in 2017. Coco also came out in 2017. Now, there's a movie. There's a movie. We were watching that this year because it's been a while. The Incredibles Part 2 came out in 2018. Yeah, oh. I, I'm. I, I've I've said my piece on the Incredibles many times already, mm, so I'm not. I'm not. Good gonna, call. Yeah. And then this other movie came out in 2019. Toy Story four. They made a fourth Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've said our piece on that one as well. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they're making a part five, so you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> People are hoping that it. Andy has children is what they're hoping. That would be for. amazing. That's what the- I don't have an issue with like them going to a new family. I no, and we have also said our part about Toy Story Four. Actually, I may have put this is the last one because this is the only one that actively angered me. <laughs> yeah, because Toy Toy Story One through Three was like a perfect trilogy, and then yeah. they tack on this Toy Story Four where it, it, I, I wouldn't I- have even been mad if it was just like a weird money grab, <laughs> but it like. Flew in the face of everything that one through three well, did. Well, like in the trailers, I'm like, oh, this new Sporky character is gonna be super annoying, and he was like the best part of the I movie. Know, I'm like, terrible. what the heck? Anyway, absolutely. Ah. Terrible. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. We've had we've had anger about this. Okay, but we also have some other stuff came out, of course, during the 2010s. Um, let's talk Star Wars first of all, because there was more Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a, well, there was a, there was a lot of Marvel that came the, out in the 2010s. The, M- the MCU got going uh-huh. in 2008, and so the 2010s were when it like oh yeah took off. Oh yeah, basically. I'm right? like going through. I'm like Marvel, Marvel. Yeah. Okay, we have the but the sequel trilogy in Star Wars mm-hmm. started. So December 18th, 2015, we have Star Wars: The Force Awakens comes out. So that was 2015, and the, and so in this environment uh that you've had the clone wars brewing mm-hmm. um they haven't had a star wars movie in a long 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 time and the last one was the prequels that a lot of people like hated but they had the clone wars making those f- fixing those yep. and you got like a new generation <laughs> that are star wars age cuz mm-hmm. everyone likes star wars more when they're like 8 through 12 12 yeah. ish i don't know whatever mm-hmm. um and so there was a lot of pent up desire for yeah. a star wars movie right so uh the force awakens was absolutely it was huge. huge and 
A lot of people don't like the sequel trilogy. I'm not one of those people. I mean, it's not the original trilogy, but okay. Um, I really But like, I loved The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens was really good. Yes, the plot is very similar to A New Hope. That was the point, though. <laughs> uh, kind of. That's fine. You just... The new characters were actually really good, which mm-hmm. is kind of tough to pull off. You need... It just needed a planned trilogy is yeah, the problem. Yeah, that was the like, problem. It was the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. But in 2016, we have Rogue One. And... Now, this is widely regarded as the best Disney-era Star Wars movie. Because it is amazing. It is very good. It literally might be my favorite Star Wars movie if it wasn't for, like, how do you not pick the original? Well, yeah, and, but, like, Rogue One doesn't work without the originals. It's it's your yep. whole Godfather 1 versus Godfather Part right. 2 yeah, argument. Literally, yeah. yeah. But it is amazing. We also have, then, in, in the year following, this is literally year for year, right? December in 2017, we have Star Wars The Last Jedi comes out. Then the following May, we have Solo A Star Wars Story came out. And this had, this was not as popular. Basically, a lot of people were like, this is too much Star Wars too quickly. Yeah, they kind of saturated the Star Wars market. And also The Last Jedi uh, really upset a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they took it out on on Solo, which it had some production problems. And it, it was fine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't it bad. Had, it felt Star Warsy. There was a lot of good cinematography, <clears throat> yeah. and there was some cool stuff in it. But, it, yeah, it just people were kind of fed yeah. up with Star Wars at that point, right? People were just mad, basically. It also, like a lot of other really big movies, came out around then, which I'll talk about in a second. <laughs> so a lot of stuff was coming out, and it was kind of getting, yeah. And like you said, people were mad. They they dumped it a bit and and Marvel was like at the peak. That was so. that was what was yeah. That was, yeah. Um, um, and then our final Star Wars movie in December 2019, we had the end of the trilogy, which was the rise of Skywalker. Okay, are you ready for Marvel? And the less we say about the rise of Skywalker, the better. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, are you ready for Marvel? Yeah. Okay. So, like you said, 2008, we had Iron Man come out. And the Incredible Hulk, yeah. And the Incredible Hulk, what? <laughs> yeah, there, there was, there was an Incredible Hulk movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, did in... you, did you know that they, they were, uh, expecting that one to be more successful? I did know that actually, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, it makes sense. Well, sure, that was at the time, Iron Man was a B minus mm-hmm. to C level tier character. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Incredible Hulk, of course, was much more well known. Well, yeah. So they're like, "Oh, this we'll just go along with this super easily," and then yeah. So since two thousand eight, Marvel Studios has released thirty two films total within the MCU. Okay, so two thousand eight may have been the first one. In twenty twelve was the first one of this decade. Here mm-hmm. we have the Avengers. Then we have. Iron Man 3 came out in 2013. Right, yeah. Iron Man 3 came out right after the Avengers. But, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, we should talk more about the uh, the Avengers. Uh, can, can we go back as I go through? Sure. No, okay, let's talk about the Avengers. Yeah, first. let's just talk about them as we go. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, just, like, the Avengers kind of changed the entire movie industry. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Um, every other company has been chasing that mm-hmm. since then. Um, Literally, you just were talking... I mean, I understand Disney owns both of them, but you were just saying they could have their own cool Avengers-style meetup. Like, that has become such a thing. Yeah, so y- you you had you had um, Warner Brothers trying to rush their superhero thing to become... They want their own Avengers. They want yeah. their own MCU. They, there's been, literally been leaks of internal emails where they're literally saying that. We want our own, <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to underestimate like what an impact that that yeah. had so i it's it's a it's a big deal it's well, it's it's to to this day like shared universes are, are like what everyone is chasing which doesn't really work all the time no so. you can't force it it worked perfectly here and it was the first one you that did ne- it you need to focus on making good movies yeah regardless of what it is just make good movies <laughs> make good movies the reason i think Avengers, the Avengers group worked. <clears throat> we cared about the characters. Yeah. We had been like, 
meeting them and getting to know them. And so when they met, it all made sense. When you're doing things like rushing just to force it, you don't care about the characters, so you don't care if they meet up yeah. or not. And I think that's one of the things Marvel does so well is it's their character-driven or, crazy stories, right? Or did so well. They <laughs> eh. there's some hey, good, there's been some, some good, good stuff, stuff, but it's it's wob it's wobbling. It's, in the 2010s, they were doing this really well. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all to that. Um, and up to Avengers, they did that. Like they're <laughs> still like there are moments in that first one that are like iconic movie moments now. Oh yeah. Well, I mean through through all of them, but like when you've got Bruce, I'm always angry. Like mm. you have that and you have that very cool mo- like there were some freaking cool moments, right? And I mean, we're talking about Loki coming out. Well, like every yeah, he existed before then people saw him in Thor and everything, mm-hmm. but like not like Avengers. No, Ave- Avengers is a classic of cinema no matter what you think about superhero movies or whatever yeah, well. it's it's just it's just like yeah. almost a perfect movie yep and so good change the industry so yeah yeah so very important very important and anyone who's like down like you can be down on where they're at now you can be like eh on overall oh, you, but like you can even be like superhero films are not for me yeah that's totally just fine. like you can say uh, sci-fi is not for me or totally. westerns are not for me totally. like but it's you still have to realize that what part of pop culture that john wayne movies had at That's, the time yeah right? like yeah it just is yeah yeah i like that yeah okay so then we went to iron man 3 in 2013 what did you think of that one that was better than iron man 2 <laughs> fair enough <laughs> we had thor the dark world in 2013 as well that was the november it was a it was a rough year. Uh, po- good good thing Avengers was good. Cause those, yeah, those two were that carried us for a while. Yeah, it car- carried us for a while. Uh, Thor two is. But it's okay. Things are gonna get better. Oh, it was Thor two is so. Because in 2014, Captain America: The Winter Soldier came out. And that again saved the MCU after a couple yeah. of downers. Well, and then you know a couple months mm. later, Guardians of the Galaxy came out. And and that one shocked everybody. Oh you ta- man! You talk about you talk about Iron Man being a, a C B minus to C level character. What what letter grade would you give the Guardians before that movie came out? Like a G <laughs> G eight, eight like oh, I don't know. I'm pretty nerdy, and I had read some comics and like stuff. I had literally never heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, not even a whisper. I'm like, what the heck? These are comic and characters. And it's amazing. Anyway, yeah, they did very very well with them yeah, and are obviously. now beloved favorites yeah uh they're they're talked like the the three guardians movies are now talked about as like one of the better trilogies of all of the mcu yeah because so, like they have a few trilogies now yeah with different characters yeah. and stuff so yeah. yeah we also had avengers age of ultron i did not dislike this as much as a lot of people did it has problems but it, it has really lots of good yeah. good parts too um so yeah it's, i thought the pacing was a little wonky yeah it, it's it's it tries to do a lot um that doesn't serve the movies mm-hmm. so, like so this is where they start maybe stumbling on the shared universe stuff right uh but there's a lot of cool parts too and and we got introduced to wanda who's my favorite yes so. yeah you, so you like it you have a soft spot <clears throat> for i do it have that such way. a soft spot um, and i like um i like Spader as the voice of Ultron. Yes. I thought he was well I, cast. I wish that the Age of Ultron was more than like a long weekend. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair. Yeah, fair. Um, he should have had more build up and, and more intimidation factor, mm-hmm. m- more similar to Thanos than. Right. Like in the comics, Ultron's scary. Right. And he was, I don't know, it was too I like short. It was like compact. Played with him a little bit in What If as a character. Yeah. Um, I agree. Ultron should have been this massive, massive thing, right? And eh, it was kind of like, eh. They they figured it out more with the Infinity pieces to like make the bad guy a big bad guy. We're actually going to talk about Marvel villains during our spooky season. Um, so we'll probably talk about Ultron again. <laughs> Sounds good. But yes, I really like this one. Yeah, and I actually have a bit of a soft spot for Hawkeye quite frankly, and it might just be because he helped out Wanda, so, mm. I don't know. <laughs> Ant-Man came out in 2015 as well, like a couple months after Avengers Age of Ultron. And that was a nice palate cleanser. Uh, basically, yeah. Um, that was an in-between because a, a year later something else came out. Yeah, Ant- Ant-Man was just good, fun 
yeah. comedy side like it's part of that universe but it it was its own thing yeah a little heist movie and funny and paul rudd paul rudd mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> Then we had Captain America Civil War, which was basically an Avengers movie, but was, they had just done an Avengers movie. So. Yeah, it's a, it's Avengers mm-hmm. um, and awesome. And Y'all fun. so good. Yeah. Same year in uh, November 2016, we have Doctor Strange. Uh, also really good. That one, at this point, there's so many superhero movies. I think people were getting overwhelmed a little bit because I remember loving this. And I really like the Avengers movies. And I still forgot a lot of details when we went back to watch it. Just because there was a lot of yeah. s- s- stuff yeah. in there. And but it, it was good. And it, it's fairly unique because it, like, does all the magic stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like, the <clears throat> all the visual effects were kind of mind-bending stuff. Right. Which, I don't know, it, it worked very well. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was really mm-hmm. good. And, again, I love Benedict Cumberbatch. This was, like, very cool. But it... There were a lot of details that when we went to rewatch it, I remembered liking it, but I couldn't remember all the things in it. It's it is one of the better origin. Mm-hmm. It's not the best, but it's one of the better origin. Yeah, movies. that's really yeah. good. Then we had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two in May 2017. Um, I liked it. It wasn't as good as the first one, but I still liked it. Yeah, it made me cry. Shocking. <laughs> We are all shocked here. <laughs> and then, speaking of surprises, Thor Ragnarok came out in November 2017. So good. Yes. I, after after uh, Love and Thunder has come out, some people are, like, rewriting history and saying they didn't like Ragnarok or something. They're lying. Like, I, I don't know. Ragnarok is fantastic. Yeah, you <laughs> can you can say whatever you want. You're, you're lying. <laughs> uh, just a few months later, so that came out in November, in February 2018, we have Black Panther. I don't think anyone can say anything bad about Black Panther. It's it's a good movie. Um, it doesn't mean to us what it means to some people, yeah, which it, we've it, said before. It, it's a cultural touchstone for a group of people. So, yep. yeah, I don't and know. And Chadwick Boseman is, was amazing in it. and Some kind of casting there, for totally, sure. Totally, yeah. So that was a very important movie. Mm-hmm. Then, in April 2018, this is... Every, so the summer movies always start in May and then Disney's like, Marvel's like, you know, we can, we can start out in April actually, because we're going to come out with Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> Oof. Oof. We have talked about this. I know we've talked about this, but like, man, it's so good. Ugh. Mm-hmm. The, literally, it's my favorite. Yeah. I... And it is my favorite. It is. Like the original Avengers is probably a better standalone. Like if you're if you're judging it on just one movie, yeah, okay. It, it, it took it did take the solo movies to build up to it. But you could watch it. Just but on you its could own. just watch it on its own, and it was just good. Whereas Infinity War, it needs it needs the payoff of Endgame, but also like the ten years of build up before yeah. that to like have the emotional I impact that. that it is. So yeah, but. It, it just works. Yeah, it's so, so good, yeah. Um, then we have Captain Marvel in March 2019. And then we have an April 2019 Avengers Endgame. Didn't we have an Ant-Man in there somewhere? No, that's it? coming after. Oh. No, wait. Ant-Man, and it. Ant-Man. Yeah, no, that came, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, that came in because, of course, Ant- and that Ant-Man was has to be trapped inside the quantum zone Sorry. to make Endgame Yeah, oh, yeah. we had a lot very quickly there. Okay, so Avengers Infinity War came out in April 2018. In July 2018, Ant-Man and the Wasp came out. In March 2019, Captain Marvel came out. And then Avengers Endgame came out in April. That's a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> this is why people start talking about superhero fatigue, I guess. Um, but... I don't know. I No, I like... Hey, if they're good, I like them. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. Okay. A movie's only two to three hours long, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I can do that every couple of months yeah, or whatever. No so, let's just back up here. Um, We talked about Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I liked it. It did some cool stuff. It was n- not... I liked Ant-Man better than Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I don't know. Like, it's supposed to just be comedic. This is also the first time... I felt like yes, you had the Captain America like go way back where you ha- but the here's where you were like playing within recent history a little bit because Ant Man and the Wasp jumped to just before the the snap right? right so yeah I think it suffered unlike the original Ant Man to being like trying to tie into too much stuff yeah. again so I don't know yeah 
Um, so then after that, then we had Endgame, mm -hmm. which a lot of people do really, really love. I liked it. There's a couple things that bother me, but I really liked it overall. Yeah. It's trying to do, ba like, Infinity War and Endgame is basically a trilogy all in one. And so Endgame's left with, like, the final two parts to jam into one movie kind Accurate. of thing. And it's, the, the pacing suffers a little bit. It's a little long, but, I mean, you got... You got Captain America wielding wielding Mjolnir, Mjolnir. So. oh, that's so good. Yeah. And you have you have the line. Yeah, you've got the line. Yeah. Um, and just before that, we had Captain Marvel. Um, and Captain Marvel, I had no problem with Captain Marvel. There's some really cool parts in it. Um, the '90s stuff was really cool, mm -hmm. and a young Nick Fury was pretty cool. Yeah. The the plot's kind of bland and. Uh, that was fine. A lot of people hated Captain Marvel well, before it's... it even started, and that was yes, it was the first female-led MCU movie, Ooh. right? So that it it got a lot of hate for that. Um, people and... boycotting it just to boycott it. Yeah, and uh, and Brie Larson kind of has RBF, so people don't <laughs> like her. Like uh, stupid stuff like yeah. that, right? Um, it's fine. I'd say it's like a solid B. Yeah. Like no, no, sure. nothing amazing, but we're nothing not terrible. we're not putting it on the same no. level here as like an one of the Avengers movies or a anything like that. But no, I liked it. I liked. I'm looking forward to the Marvels. Yes, I I hope that's fun. I hope so too. Okay, and that takes us basically to the end of the decade with Marvel. Animated. Ready? Big de big decade for Marvel, like. Yeah, and, and Marvel was the big one. Mar here. Marvel owned the 2010s. It really, really did. Yeah. Like for anything. For for the movie industry, like it, yeah, that, the movie industry was Marvel. One hundred percent, and not just Disney, like yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna talk. Um, in 2010, actually, we actually had the resurgence of Disney animation because a couple things happened. Tangled came out in 2010, which a lot of people like. You know, th thank you, millennials, basically. Liked it. Like, it's, really liked it. It's solid. Yeah, solid. Um, Winnie the Pooh came out, the, the animated one, in 2011. This is the new, they're re trying to research that. And something else came out later, which I forgot to talk about with live action, but I'll get to it. Um, we also have Wreck-It Ralph came out in 2012. I, so good. I, I love Wreck-It Ralph. I don't uh, care. <laughs> no, it's so, so good. Like, good, because it's amazing. And then in 2013, we have Frozen. You can say what you want about Frozen. What's what's that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? No one's heard of that. No, before, never. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> so, like... Just a small little just movie. Just a small oh, movie. Man. I don't know if you know about it. Or, like, the music. I don't know if you've heard of any yeah, of the songs. A couple songs, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, <laughs> you can say what you want. The biggest complaint people have about Frozen is that, is it, was that it was so popular. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> And I mean, fair enough. I'm sure, I'm sure if you had kids of a certain age and Frozen came out and and they play Let It Go 700 billion times in a row, you'd probably not like it very much. Yeah, but... that's fine. That isn't a critique against it. No, it's, it's like, not, it's damn fine. you for being so good. It's not the movie's fault. Hey, no, Frozen's good. Yeah, Frozen's good. That's the end of the story. Yeah. 2014, we have Big Hero 6. Now, that, that's underrated. Yeah. Super underrated. So good. We should go meet Baymax. I'm going to go meet Baymax. You are. <gasps> You better fist bump him. I'm, how would I not? I will absolutely fist mm -hmm. bump him. Uh, in 2016, we also have Zootopia, which I really liked and would like to watch that again. It was fine. Yeah. 2016, we also have Moana. Um, now we have this... <sighs> Moana, I know you're like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. I liked Moana. Um, but we have this interesting... A lot of female ones that aren't princesses, right? Necessarily. Well, I guess technically Moana is the chief's daughter, so she would be a princess. But um, well, they're different cultures, so they're not a princess, not a princess. Yes, right? no, like, I, I understand yeah. that. But also, um, we have like this girls who aren't like marrying a prince at the end right, of the movie. There, yeah. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, there's a lot of princess in the movie. There's way fewer than there are anything else. But those are the ones that like were really popular. So a lot of people like know them and recognize them and think about them when they think about Disney movies. So, and we had a lot of non ones, but like Tangled follows that same one, yeah. right? Frozen didn't, but it well, did a lot of other touchstone things. It, it, it did, but it was like 
kind of a satirical look at yes, the princess exactly. formula. Yeah, where it like it hit like it brushed up against it. Right. Yeah. Um so and Moana doesn't at all. No. Like at all. It has a great villain song, by the way. Yeah. That's the shiny. The, that's the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> um I, I also like I also like I like you're welcome. The, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, oh, I do too. It's the great. Ro- the Rock that that might be The Rock's best role. Honestly, it's like, maybe because like he do, since it's animated, he doesn't have to be The Rock. He doesn't have to be sweaty in a jungle somewhere. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he isn't. What? Well, it's more like by the ocean. There's not really like some of the islands are jungly, but yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to go into his his closet and get his tenth khaki shirt right. out. Like. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I, Moana grows on me the more I think about it. Yeah. I, like, and Lynn manuel Miranda wrote the music. Yeah. So. Well, those two songs. I like, see, that that's the thing. I don't like Moana's main song as much. Oh, I like it. Um, How Far I'll Go, I, I really yeah, like it. Yeah. Uh, it's not for you, though. No. It's for, it is the equivalent of Part of Your World. It is for... A, but I like Part of Your World. Yeah, that's fine. You grew up with it. This is for the little girls. I guess. Yeah, but instead of know. instead of at the edge of the pool doing the, like, big rays, they're, like, looking out towards the water. And it's that is the equivalent to girls now. Or kids now. Whatever. I don't know. Uh, being on the side of the pool, pretending to be a, <laughs> a mermaid. Or maybe Spider-Man. You could be Spider-Man on the side of the pool. That's too, true. Honestly. That, that yeah. is true. We'll do that too. Um, then in 2018, we have Ralph Breaks the Internet. I'd actually like to watch this one again. That was pretty good. It was, it was a solid sequel. Yeah. Actually. And I loved the inclusion of all the Disney princesses yeah, hanging fun. out. It's fun. I just want to say Snow White. I, I've seen this before. Um, Snow White is wearing a t-shirt with the poison apple on it. She's she's wearing the thing that almost killed her as like, that's, that's kind of badass. <laughs> Everyone move. deals with trauma in their own way. <laughs> so uh, that was 2018. I did like that. That was fun. We had Frozen 2 come out in 2019. I'd like to watch this again. I was quite excited for it. The animation is beautiful. There's some a couple really cool moments, and I like what it was trying to do. I feel like sometimes it tried a little too hard. The, the plot is not great <laughs> but no i liked what it was trying to do with the plot but mm. i felt like it was trying to hard. like it was like it was very reconciliation focused yeah i don't know eh. mm. was not not horrible but no, not no, great good. and i like that it um it dealt with <sighs> the new disney movies are not just adventure and then happy ending and i like those don't get me wrong but there's also like intergenerational trauma going on and frozen Two looked at that they're like we can love our parents and our family and our history and also be like you guys you guys screwed up you did something bad we got to fix it kind of thing or we got to try right. and fix it yeah. i also like the focus on anna anna um and not just elsa like it was both a little bit more and her being like something really bad is happening so there's like it does some stuff it i think it tries to do a little more heavy lifting <laughs> Yeah. Than it needed to do. At the end of the day, it's still just Frozen Two. You're not. Uh... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And Kanto, I think, did the intergenerational trauma thing a little bit more effectively. Oh, definitely. Right. So anyway, and that takes us to the end of the animated movies. But one thing I did want to mention, I said before that Winnie the Pooh, the animated Winnie the Pooh, came out earlier in the decade. They did have the Christopher Robin live action movie come out um, close towards the end there as well. Oh. And you and McGregor can do no wrong. So. He- it was good. The the three D old style A. A. Milne mm-hmm. animals in, in like a three D CGI thing. That was very uncanny valley. It was a little uncanny valley, but I liked it. I liked the story of it and like I said, you and McGregor I was, can do no I, wrong. I was pretty sure that they they were gonna rise up and murder some people in the real world. I don't know. Is they're creepy, yeah. Nah. <laughs> so twenty tens, what was your favorite animated? Wreck It Ralph or Big Hero Six probably yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just more for me. So yeah, that's that's fine. Those are both really really good. Yeah. Um, actually, of the out of all of them, I probably ooh, I might pick one of those ones as well. I'd have to think about it. Or I don't know. First time I saw Frozen, it's just hard now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, Star Wars. What was your favorite? I. I still have a soft spot for Force Awakens because yeah. it was such an event and it was so cool and that was a very cool moment. And for it me was, too. there was so much hope at that point, mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah. Um, With hindsight, maybe not like 
Rogue One's probably like a better standalone yeah. movie, and it doesn't have the baggage of a of a sequel trilogy that kind of fell off the deep end. And, and it has Diego Luna. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, but Force Awakens was really really fun, and I had a really good time seeing it twice. The first, me too. The opening night. Well, and not then, I didn't saw it twice, and once the next day. Yeah. So I don't know. It it just reminded me of how excited I was when the episode one came out yeah um and it was better than episode one so yeah that was it was cool it was a huge event it it's kind of like why i think because the next question i'm gonna ask is the avengers um sorry the marvel movies um avengers infinity war is the a uh, it's really really good a big part of the reason why it's probably my favorite although i may be avengers but is because of the event of going to it and like how memorable a lot of the movie going moments were for that and i feel like force awakens did the same thing rogue one didn't uh to this like the same way or anything but i love rogue one so much (laughs) so i don't know um okay so i already said avengers infinity war is mine what is your favorite marvel yeah, it would be like Guardians of the Galaxy is right up there as like again mm-hmm. as a standalone movie. It's it's really good. Um, or Avengers itself, of course. Yeah, and Avengers is absolutely fantastic. But uh, yeah, I think Infinity War just like encapsulates mm-hmm. the MCU, the first decade of the MCU, so well. And the both we we went and saw it pretty early on twice, mm-hmm. and both times like the theater experience. Yeah. This was pre-COVID, um, and just having that shared audience experience was something that was really crazy. Yeah, there was. There have been a lot of very cool movie-going experiences tied up in Star Wars movies and Marvel movies, and a lot of that happened in the 2010s. Mm-hmm. Um, in and then you know, <laughs> and then we ended in 2019, and we all had a lot of hope for 2020 and the new decade and. Yep, that was that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah, we had Disney Plus coming stuff coming. Um, all right, so this episode went a little longer because we were looking at a whole decade. So um, I'm not gonna get you to make a drink. Okay, if that's okay, unless you had one ready to go. Um, I think we should have uh, we should do the Avengers because we were talking about. The oh, MCU. I like that. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so you, you need like. A six-part drink. Ooh, six. Okay, uh, for the Infinity Stones. Yeah. Okay. So there's got to be uh, cherry coke in there for Black Widow. Okay, I got um, that. A green monster for the Hulk. For the of Hulk. Um, a little bit of Honey Jack for Thor. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. Ooh, this is gonna be strong. It's also uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's also gonna be large. <laughs> yeah, no this this is gonna be like a three ounce drink because we okay. got two we got two mixes. Um, we got honey jack, an ounce of honey jack, uh, for Thor. Mm-hmm. And what 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 Iron Man have? Um, I don't know. He does drink a lot. He's gonna have something. He's gonna have something fancy, but I don't want to make it taste gross either. So it's it's probably going to be something like. I don't know Saint Germain. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. In there, so, uh, that would be fancy, yeah. oh, but a little bit sweet because yeah, because it has to tie in there. Yeah. Okay, Hawkeye. What does Hawkeye have? Um. He's he's probably <sighs> he's tough. He's tough. He's purple. Yeah, can, he's can, purple. Go, go. What, what's purple? We'll just throw a little bit of purple gin in there. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. A little bit. A that sh- won't affect the. A shot of purple gin. Yeah. Um, Maybe half a shot. It is only Hawkeye. <laughs> Good point. Okay, we got a half ounce of purple gin for Hawkeye. Oh, I feel bad now. I love Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and yeah, that's your that's your six, right? You gonna throw some Nick Fury in there? Oh, okay. Um, okay, hold on. Well, let me just think here. You have Hulk. Yeah. You have Black Widow. Mm-hmm. You have Iron Man. Mm-hmm. You have Thor. Mm-hmm. You oh, have Captain Hawkeye, America. Yeah, and you need Captain America. Captain and America, you need Nick of course. Fury. Of course. What? So we're we just gotta. This is probably gonna taste absolutely horrible. <laughs> You're gonna try this one. <laughs> we got. He's the leader, and 
what's more American than apple pie? We need two ounces of apple pie moonshine. We don't need two of them. Two ounces. <laughs> no. of, two. He's the leader. Two ounces of apple pie moonshine. Oh, no. You know what? That might not be too bad with the honey jack. Apple and honey kind of, okay. And some green uh, monster. Uh, again, you lost me. And cherry coke. <laughs> okay, Nick Fury, what are we throwing in? Uh, so that's going to be the garnish. Okay. Um, we need... Oh, God, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah. We need uh, just like a, a blood orange twist. You know what? That would be very Nick Fury. Yeah. He does like his... What, what is he drinking? Port? No. He he likes a bourbon. Oh, a bourbon. Yeah, okay. Um, but but you put like an orange twist on a bourbon. Yeah, like, like an old-fashioned type saying. of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, my goodness. This is... This, this, this is the one that I would be the least excited to try. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it might all work. It's like the Avengers. They're not supposed to work, but maybe they do. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. They'll get the job done. They might destroy New York <laughs> along the way, but they'll get the job done. <laughs> is New York your liver? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I like it. Oh, that's perfect. That That's the slogan for your new drink. Oh, it. Okay, well, that is our episode. Brandon, this was our last Decades episode. Yeah. It's kind of sad, actually. Mm. It's, it's time. It's time. We've been working on it for how since we started the podcast, yeah. quite frankly. We took a long break. We and, did. Yeah. We did. But that is our show this week. Thank you, Elmiel, who's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website, disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. And there you can also find a link to our social media accounts and our email, you can contact us directly through there as well if you want to be cool like Jennifer did. You can Thumbs find... up. Yeah. We are mostly on Instagram and a little bit on Facebook, but Instagram's probably our easiest way to get a hold of us as well. You can find Disney A episodes on all of your favorite We're... podcast streaming platforms and on our YouTube channel, Adventures A. Uh, just, just an aside on the socials. Um... Twitter still exists for now. Uh, apparently, they're going to start charging for it, or that's what. The, yeah, so so buy Twitter. And the, yeah, you literally, it's going to be. In we a, re, we were like don't really do anything on there anyway yeah. right now. Uh, the, might... I just I just had to throw that in there. Are it's you kinda, serious? Like that, that's actually... the, that's that's what. Do uh, they really just want to kill what, Twitter? That's what Elon has been saying. Yeah, he's going to start doing a monthly fee. And oh, like... is he just really wanting to keep Twitter in the news or X or whatever it's called? Yeah, basically, also probably wants to force it into bankruptcy so he can. Oh, I see. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. He's Well, if that's the case, yeah. we will not be on Twitter anymore. Exactly. But for right now, we are. And you should go read Brandon live tweeting, watching trilogies, because that's fun. Yeah. Well, you still can, because it's going to be all gone. Yep. If you've rated or reviewed our podcast, thank you. And if you haven't yet, please do. It helps others find us, especially if you do through Apple Podcasts. But really, we just appreciate anything. And we really appreciate messages, because those are awesome. Next episode, Brandon, it is... What si What season is it again? Spooky season! Spooky season! Remember how we started doing deep dives? Yeah, actually, I do. Yeah. Um, what is better for spooky season than a deep dive into the Haunted Mansion? Uh, very few things, I would imagine. <laughs> right. It is officially October next episode, so... We should probably watch the new Haunted Mansion movie. Um... It hasn't come out yet on Disney+. Plus. Oh, it should be soon, though. I'm sure it'll be soon. It might be, like, that week, honestly. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to look that up. Uh, you continue. Okay. If that's the case, we might do some rearranging for Spooky Season. But that is a possibility. We have a lot of Spooky Season stuff coming. In fact, we have more ideas than we have weeks to do them in. So that might be the one. Well, but like I said, we also have Villains Marvel to discuss. So we'll, we'll do one of those next. So I'm Krista. I'm Brandon, and Haunted Mansion will be on Disney Plus October 4th. Okay, we are not talking about the Haunted Mansion next week. We're going to talk about villains of Marvel next week. Every spooky season, we talk about villains. Perfect. And there's some good ones, and there's some bad ones. Yeah, so. exactly. Ooh, are we going to talk about the Netflix ones, too? Mm, sure. Okay. They're, they're kind of... We'll pretend that they're, like, it's kind of a side universe. Okay. I don't know. All right, sounds good. So until that next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney A.I.